Okay, today I'm going to show you my version, or what I understand the molar method to be. Molar method to be. Uh, if you haven't heard of the molar method, I think uh, it was invented for marching drumming. I'd have to look back at the history, but I think it goes back to like military drumming. Uh, and the person that I first saw do the molar method, well, actually, to tell you the truth, my teacher, uh, Jungle Jim. He showed me the molar method and gave me some tips and then I went ahead and did my own research finding that Jim Chapin was one of the guys who really did a good explanation of the molar method which it's uh, it's a sticking technique that will actually help your playing on the drum set mostly even though it was originally military drumming because that's kind of changed but it really helps with jazz drumming and, and any kind of drum set playing. Uh, so Jim Chapin, if you want to look at a really good explanation of the Molar Method, look for Jim Chapin's uh, material on YouTube. Unfortunately, he's passed away, but he still has stuff, and there's still a lot of stuff on the internet you can find, and he has books too. And the other guy was Jojo Mayer. Jojo Mayer is awesome. I have a video that he did specifically on the Molar Method, and um, I even haven't finished it. It's very in-depth about using that technique. And as if you've seen Jojo Mayer, look him up. He's amazing, and he's great with that. So, basically the Muller method is, like I said before, holding your sticks just between the first, you know, just your two, uh, your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb, like this. And that's all you're really, you know, you're really using these two as a fulcrum. And these back fingers are just used for uh, a little bit of control. But really what the Muller method is, it's kind of what Jen Chapin said, it's kind of like a, a whip. You're really just letting the stick, you're starting back here and you're, you're dropping it down, see, and you're letting it flow, because it's all about the bounce. See? I mean, that's kind of over-exaggerated, but it's, it's over-exaggerated, but it's giving you that, it's kind of propelling your plane. But you're always using the bounce of the drum. You're not holding on too tight. A lot of times I just let it just kind of float in between these fingers. So you just let it bounce. Maybe I can show it a little bit closer. Maybe a little bit of a, a closer look on the hands. Let's see. Okay. So, uh... It's, uh, so that's kind of it. I mean, you could look. There's, people have different kind of versions of it. That's just the way I understand it. You could look it up. Jim Shaven gives the best explanation. So uh, what I've learned by practicing, it gives you a lot of flexibility. And, uh, and as you practice, you get more of a... It's loose playing, but you can get, you're just working out the bounce of the drum. You're not really forcing... Uh, so you're actually, you're not as tired after you play. You can play, I've played a four or five hour set using the, Chap the, the Jim Chapman or the Muller Method techniques and uh, not even, you know, really break a sweat. Uh, and I could, you know, I showed you the double stroke roll and, and the buzz roll. I've never showed you the single stroke roll, but this can kind of work into the single stroke roll. Maybe it's just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now once you start moving, of course it's not going to be exaggerated like this. That just gets you to practice the bounce. So you're really just starting the, 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 you're starting the movement right back here and you let it bounce. So you could do like... Once you get it going. See, I don't do that. When I'm playing, I'm not using that exaggerated elbow thing, but that's kind of a way to train yourself into it. But I, you know. So it's, uh, you get that momentum. Now, I'm not the best at it, but it really gave me that kind of free flowing.
So that's kind of the Mueller method, and if you watch uh, Jojo Mayer, he gets into, oh man, he's amazing. He's using his, these fingers as fulcrums, and he shows you the technique, and I can't remember the video, but look him up, and he gets the one-handed rolls going. You know, the, he starts out with just a... Almost like a freight train, or like a train that's, you know, an old steam engine. It's just, he starts going, and it just... You see, you almost see his elbow as like a, a crank on a train, and, and, and pretty soon he's got this thing going. He's the best at it. He even does it with the bass drum. He is, it kind of, and that's a whole, a whole other thing, but uh, I'm kind of an amateur at it, but I use it every day. say about it. You just have to practice that, that motion and try to be more of a loose player with your hands not being so tight like in marching band and it will serve you for long four hour sets, drum solos, you know where you need your power and you don't really need to hit the drums that hard to get the power especially with mics. Most drummers have microphones you don't need to slam the drums. You get a better tone when you, when you just let it bounce. This, that's a whole other story. It's the same issue. You're, you're just using your elbow. You got that bounce and just controlling it with the middle finger. And I'm not a, very good at that, but. It's just something I learned, and, and I'm not doing it exactly like Jim Chip, and you'll watch him, he just kind of does this, and he just gets that thing going. I I really do recommend watching his videos, he's amazing. He's just really getting that going. I'm just like a beginner. As you can see, I need a little work on my singles. I think the next video, I'm going to go back into double stroke rolls, uh, seven stroke, five stroke rolls, so we'll get back into that. And I just wanted to show you that technique. Thank you very much.